today's lesson is going to be on C-sharp events, and C-sharp events can be used for all sorts of things. Let's say you have um, your enemy ship, and you shoot it and you blow it up. Well, instead of having everything tied to it, like, oh, we got to find the score somewhere on the screen, update the score, maybe shoot off some particle effects. What events allow us to do is just to go ahead and fire off one event, and it's equivalent to the ship yelling out, hey, I've just been destroyed, and the score, when it hears that, automatically updates. Uh, maybe we have a particle manager that will go out and instantiate the explosion effect where the ship is. There could be some sort of, maybe it's a swarm game where there's um, a number of ships that we've got to destroy. They counter automatically decrements for us. And the great thing about events is that it leaves everything just completely uncoupled. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. And then we'll go ahead in the next video and implement it into one of our games. In today's lesson, we're going to go ahead and start taking a look at event systems. And the first event system I want to look at is the C-sharp system, simply because I think it's the easiest, and if you're working outside of Unity, well, it still works. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first script. So I've gone ahead and created a script called Event Manager. And the first line here, delegate, don't worry about it if you've never seen the word before. For the sake of this video, just think of it as defining the method signature for all of the methods that we want to handle the event. Now that's a little foggy, uh, it should come clear as we go along with it. So let's just go ahead and take a look at it. We have a void return type. Uh, the method name, it really doesn't matter. And we're not passing any parameters. So we have some method that does not take parameters and returns void. That's pretty easy, we create tons of methods like that. Next, we go ahead and create a static event, and we're telling the event to use this delegate type up here for it. And the static keyword's new. For the sake of this video, it allows us to go ahead and access this event without getting a reference to the, the manager. It's always available to us, even if we haven't created a game object with this event manager on it yet. So let's go ahead, we'll come down here to the method. Now take note that I've gone ahead and named my event on the than some method name. So on my event or on fire lasers or on player death. Uh, it's just a naming that I picked up a long time ago and I've just always used. I always put on in front of all of my methods or on, sorry, in front of all my events. And then when it comes to the method, uh, it's the exact same thing except I just take the on off. Now this is also static because I want to be able to call it from outside of this script without getting a reference to it. And all we're going to do inside of this method Let's go ahead and check to see if we have anything subscribed. If we do have anything subscribed, it will not return null. So if there's nothing subscribed, or in some languages they're called listeners, if there's no one listening, it will return null. If we do have something, then go ahead and fire off this event. So I'm going to quickly go into my input manager. This is where we're going to be firing the event off. And it's simply just an update script. All I'm doing is just listening for when I press the W key down. And what I do, I'm going to go ahead and go into that event manager. Remember, that's where we got the, the methods in there for the events. And I'm going to call that my event method right over here. And let's go ahead and take a look at the green script or the green cube script. Now, in order to interact with those events, we have to listen to it or subscribe to it. Again, depending what language you're coming from. And C Sharp is referred to as a publisher and subscriber but you will hear me refer to it through other names like broadcaster uh, and listener. I can't help it, I'm old and some of those older language names are just stuck there. Uh, but anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, go into that event manager, look for this event on my event, which we defined up here, which is static. And we're gonna plus equals, which means we're gonna listen to it. We wanna add this method to fire off every time that event fires off. And this is the name of the method that we're going to use. And if we come down here, this is it. But before we go ahead and look at that method, I want to point out that if you're going to go ahead and listen for events or subscribe to them, you better make sure that you have a way to unsubscribe to them when the object is disabled or destroyed. The best place in Unity to listen for them is on enable and on disable. If you don't do it, you're going to end up with memory leaks. So as soon as you go ahead and create that listener on well, in on enable, go right ahead and make that on disable right away as well. So let's go ahead, we'll look at this method that's going to handle the event. And every time that event fires off, all we're going to do is just take our position 
and move it up one unit. So let's jump back into the project. We'll start it up. We'll watch the green cube. And every time I hit W, it just goes up one unit. Now, again, one of the great things about events is that you can have multiple things listening for the same event and do something different. So if you have a ship and it blows up, maybe it's your player ship, uh, you'll want to go ahead and decrease your, your lives total up in the corner. Uh, maybe spawn some sort of explosion where your ship is. Maybe your enemies, you know, fly a certain pattern or something like that. After you die, they wander away, giving you a chance to respawn and be able to get into position or something like that before they come. Whatever it is you need to do, you can pretty much do it with an event. So let's go ahead and look at this blue script. Or the blue cube script. So again, on enable and on disable, I've gone ahead and said, hey, subscribe this method to this event. And on disable, unsubscribe. And then in the spin event, all I'm going to do is go ahead and take the blue cube, and I'm just going to rotate it 45 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and save that off. And now when I go ahead and hit the play button, maybe, and we go ahead and hit W, we notice the green one still goes up, the blue one rotates. Great. Now what about passing parameters? What if we wanted to update our score through an event, and we wanted to be able to pass in different, different score values for uh, maybe different enemy ships? Well, we'll go ahead and create one with parameters. Actually, let's just update the old one we have. Uh, so we'll go ahead and make it rotate in a different direction, maybe rotate backwards, and this will come down. So in our delegate, we're just going to say, now we have to take a bool, and it doesn't matter what you call it, I'm just going to call it dir for direction. We do not have to touch the event. For the event here, we will need to, though. So again, bool dir. Then on my event, we need to pass that value in, which is dir. I'm going to save that off. I'm going to come into my input script. And the way I'm going to work is if I hit W, I'm going to pass in true, since it's just a Boolean value. And for some reason it went up there. And if I hit the S key, I'm going to pass in false. Let's give a space there. Now I'm going to come into the green cube. And now we have to go ahead and Take a Boolean value in here. Uh, I'm just going to keep the same variable name, but again, it really does not matter what the variable name is. I want to check to see if it's true. So we can say if dir is equal to true. Short form is just to check it this way, if dir. And if we want to check for the false, we can also just put an exclamation mark in front of it. For those new, I'll keep it the long form. So if it's true, we'll go ahead and move up. Else. If it's not true, we'll move it down. And to move it down, we're just instead of moving up one unit, we'll subtract that unit. I'll save that off. We'll come back into the blue script. Same thing. We have to go ahead, take a bool in, and then if dir. This one I'll do shorthand. If dir. Else. And we'll just rotate backwards 45 degrees. There we go. And I just want to fix this. That should be all the changes we need. Now, I did want to point out that I do have my input script and my event manager on uh, just one game object manager. It really doesn't matter. You can put them on anything you want. You can even go ahead and set it up so that they don't even need a game object to be on. They could just exist in memory. For the sake of simplicity, I just went ahead and created one empty game object and threw them both on. All right, so now when we go ahead and start it up, when we hit the W key, same behavior as before, but when we hit the S key, we get the exact opposite. All right, there we go. That's how you go ahead and play with C-Sharp Event. Let's start implementing these things into our games. For the next video, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>